And so, with us and our friends flying on our birds, we have arrived at our destination. Make ready, friends! We are come to the burn! Yeah, and as soon as we do, all of a sudden the winds whip up and everyone gets everyone, scattered. Land where you can! We must wait out the storm! Yeah, gotta get down. So we've arrived at our main story dungeon, The Burn. One of the few dungeons in game that's actually um, primarily set in a natural setting. So the moment we sat down, we are joined by our compatriots, our allies, including El Santa, of course. And so away we go. Yeah, of course, not surprisingly, the wind is still whipping around. Let's confront our first set of enemies. Yeah, more things that can fly. We also have a bit of a remix of the some of the music that we've heard before here in Stormblood. First thing I thought of my, myself when I first played this this morning was Messiah. Uh, as far as the location where we are and the music that's being played. It reminds me a lot of Grand Pulse from Final Fantasy XIII and its main city, um, Erba. The, just the environment and the music just really reminds me of that part of the game. Now running along this part, careful where you stand, cause if you're not careful, you get hit on the head with a boulder. So yeah, be careful where you walk. Um, who should we hit first? Choices, choices, decisions, decisions. Yeah, and if you do get hit by a boulder, it's not fatal. It just hurts a lot. It just hurts a lot and then you'll have to be tested for CTE later. Now we have to deal with the marionettes. You're the lady, you're the lady, you're the lady. Yeah, no. well, not only the wrong um, form of medium, but not even a musical in this instance. So a boulder rolls away, allowing us to advance to the next area. But yeah, come on, don't tell me you don't love the marionette part from The Sound of Music. I was with my uncle and his wife and their son driving around a few years ago while I was at Con Bravo. I went to pay them a visit and they decided to go for a family um, day out in the evening on one of the nights I was there. And they actually had in their car music from The Sound of Music. And they were actually playing the Yoda Lady, Yoda Lady, Yoda Lady Who. Which I just thought, that's cool to um, get their little son because he's only like he's only four right now or he more specifically he will be four um in december yeah it's, it's weird when you say that your uncle has a four-year-old son and knowing that he's almost 50 years old and if you think that's crazy he also has a uh, baby daughter who's only nine months old. Yeah, it took my uncle a long time to find someone he could marry, and he finally did. But surprisingly, his wife is actually his second. He actually married for the first time in 2004 after years of trying. But that marriage ended in divorce after four years. And then... Four years later, he married again, and he's still with his current wife. And they now have two children together. Now, taking a slide through a sand fall, and right through a conveniently placed hole, as we head over, as we head over to boss number one. Head a tet here in the Scorpion's Den. 
Going for the confrontation. So yeah, as you may have noticed, we have stalagmites on the field. These are very important, as you can probably imagine. They're going to have a lot of purpose in this battle. Stay out of the way of the hail fire there, because someone's being targeted with it. Yeah, if you get targeted with that, run behind one of the pillars. Close enough to me, old Santa. Oh, okay, now this time we do have to run behind a pillar. We all have to run behind a pillar. And then we all have to run away from the pillars and run underneath the boss. Yeah, basically, Yazmat's move where everyone has to huddle in underneath the boss in order to save themselves from being completely or almost completely wiped out. Alright, there's Hank. Looks like we're gonna share a little. Whoop, well, yeah, back here. Alright, he's targeting someone else. Oh, he's going after the Ulcent again? Yeah, it seems like he's got a tooth for black ma- for black mages and black magic. Whoa, take this away. And then lunge back in. Alright, Tank has him in a very conveniently located spot. That don't make that move just yet. Now one jumps in. Yeah, we almost got this guy beat. Yeah, he's pretty easy. And he is the easiest of these bosses. They do get harder. If you're thinking, where is the difficulty? Because this is a 4.4 main story dungeon. Don't worry, it's coming. So head to head is taken care of. And away we go. So yeah, now we're gonna have a bit of a transition here. For part two. Yeah. Alec and Ruins? There are more of them around here? Yeah, it seems like Alec and Ruins are everywhere. I could have sworn I used my brother dragon. There we go. Yeah, don't hold out on me. Don't hold out on me there, people. So I might as well use my battle litany while we're transitioning over to attacking another enemy, and Tank's gonna pull over to the next group. Yeah, because the droid is dead now. Chase after that thing. Alright, let's take a spot right behind the dreadnought. Thank us share a little. And do all these newfound enemies, but yeah. Like I said, this area is very much like Grand Pulse in Final Fantasy XIII. Because yeah, because yeah, these enemies that you're seeing were actually enemies that were featured originally in Final Fantasy XIII. The Dreadnoughts and the other droids like them. Those all came from 13. Okay, away we go. Now we're dealing with a bunch of Coblins. And a really big one, too. Whoa! Gotta run right through! I gotta run right through that. Now let's go for some group damage. Go for some group damage and really take it to them. Alright, they're all gone. Now on uh, to more Alligan Ruins and more Dreadnoughts and Friends. Yeah, 
Splash down with fire. Thankfully, I stunned him. Yeah, you got stunned, boy. Now you're gonna get taken out, too. Ooh, okay. Watch out for that, though. Yeah. Overly long cast time. Dreadnought is down. Here's Cobra Mastron. Oh, he's gonna self destruct. Which he did. Now, I did not want to get Combo Line of Fire or that. So it's just in the way. Now, I'd rather be on the safe side, thank you. And we're getting a lot of gears sent our way. Off to mini boss number two the defective drone. This guy is a thing. It took us a little while in my run with Mathai to figure it out. Then I noticed one of the things that you need to do in order to ensure not only victory, but also safety. Because, yeah, error message that says deploying auxiliary drones. So he's going to go away for a moment. Which is right now. And he's going to bring some friends. Now watch what above them. We need to be on the far right end because, yeah, one of them doesn't move, everyone else does, and does a mad dash across the field. If you stand in front of the one that doesn't mad dash, you don't take damage. It took us a little while to figure it out in my test run, but I realized that, um, in fact, I was also the one to figure out one of the major um, strategies for taking on the final boss, too. Yeah, now we have an obstacle removal protocol being implemented. Which means stay out of the way of these two blades. These two hovering discs. Or you could likely end up on the receiving end of that. Stuff's in my way. Stuff's in my way. Yeah, we're dealing pretty good damage here. I'm satisfied with what we're doing to the guy. Of course, El Santa and I are on the DPS. We're pretty good at what we do. We should expect to, yeah, to see him do the dash one more time. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's also going to throw in a little curveball with more of these blades. So we want to stay away from the blades, but also find the one drone that doesn't have a countdown. Which is this one. Oh, uh, damn it, the healer died. Not only that, we also have an ad on the field. But we got we got through this last time without the healer, because the healer died during my run with Lathia too. That that's not easy to avoid. But if you but if you're patient and you take your time with it and you figure it out, you'll know what to do. And you'll be fine. So now we've got to wait for the healer to come back. And yeah, if you thought that was the craziest thing that can happen with a boss in this dungeon, ho oh, ho ho Let me tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, wait till we get to the final boss. So now, we go back outside, the storm has ended, and the skies have cleared up. Yeah. I was not lying when I said this place looks a lot like Grand Pulse from Final Fantasy XIII. I was not lying when I said that because there's a lot of truth in that statement. It just gives, it just really gives you that vibe of being on Grand Pulse. You jump. Do things along. Good, he'll send us nearby. I do have to say, the music is very tranquil for where we are, being in a desolate wasteland. It is weird like that. Now we have to fight off worms. Oh, 
We want to stun him, possibly. No, he can't be stunned. Also, it didn't help that my blow didn't find its mark for whatever reason. Ugh. Yeah, like, come on, what's going on? Yeah, why are you being weird like that, gang? In the air. Some more damage done. Past the worms, moving on to the next section. Where there are more worms. Yeah, in fact, we're even going into an area that's called the first worm. Yeah, just to reaffirm exactly where you are in the world. Yeah, just as if you didn't need a confirmation on where you already are. Yeah, just to remind you where everything is. Now we're over here. Down. Next. Yeah, stuff's coming from the bottom. Yeah, now we have ants to deal with. Yeah, Sal, where were you guys when we were fighting the worms? You call yourselves worm stalkers. Could have used you when the worms were attacking us. You could have beaten them. Or something. I don't know what you do out here with those worms. That's none of my business. I'm gonna hold off on using my dragon sight again until we get to the final boss, because we're pretty close to it now. Not quite there. Now we're there. Knock that hell down. Alright. Yep, there we go. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's kill this guy first, at least. There we go. Now to the final boss. And if you've been watching my Final Fantasy IV Let's Play, this boss should look familiar. Remember the first boss of that game? If you don't, this is what it looks like in Final Fantasy XIV form. This is why you guys should watch my Let's Plays. Especially the current one with Final Fantasy IV. Say hello to the Mist Dragon. The soul and essence of Rydia's mother, back from the dead and now tormenting us here as the final boss here at the Burn. Let's go! Yeah, so this thing really loves to keep on the mechanics. We are going to be seeing that a lot here. Oh, I already have one of those. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, we'll see quite a few clever tricks implemented, like these fog booms which cause a star to appear on the field. And you see that star memorizes its pattern because you're going to see AoE spreading across the field. And then we have a little page out of the Titan playbook. Someone gets trapped in a boulder of mist and then you got to set them free. <coughs> All right, Dragon dissolves into mist. That's going to lead to these things. We have ads on the field. Now we gotta kill them in order to prevent this room from being completely covered in AoE, similar to that of the final boss over in the hard mode of Aim Before Keep. Once we got them all, that stops the expansion. And the dragon returns. So this is coalescing, strike now! Yes there, mysterious narrator. Now whenever you get targeted with this, take it away. Yeah, you don't want that on the field, or at least not close to me. Oh, what happened with Bill Sam? Oh, well, whatever. Um, we need to get away. Is it we going to spread? Thankfully, with stacks, it was not that much of a concern, but there was a boulder on the field. 
you need to go remove it. Thankfully, El Santa has magic to deal with that problem. Unfortunately, you couldn't see my Blood of the Dragon going because I had to run away from the boss. But we can always get it back. Really? No one's close enough for, you to take, for them to take Dragon Sex from you? Alright. Alright, now this thing. When the dragon does this, get to a corner. You gotta have everyone scatter here. Or else you are gonna be on the receiving end of getting smashed in the face. And he does this twice. Yeah, don't... Yeah, don't punch yet. Yeah, the second time he does offer a tell... And then you got to run away from group um, or a wave AoE. Thankfully, we were far away enough that the tank or the healer was not affected. So now basically, it's just, now that we've taken, seen all the mechanics, it's now just a matter of survival. Which in itself can be a challenge. Because in my run this morning with Mathiah, killing this boss took four tries. Which I haven't had that many attempts against the final boss of a dungeon in a very long time. Probably not since the, um, the first time I was attempting the Stone Vigil. Yeah, over here. Shoot that off into nothing and I'll hit you with a double limit break. This should be enough to put you away. And it is. Well, not quite, but we got a little pushover from everyone else. So the soul of Radia's mother is vanquished once again, which means, sadly, once again, she's dead. But we won the fight! And thankfully, we're not taking a package to the Miss Village, which co actually complains, contains a whole bunch of bombs that will burn this town to the ground. So victory is ours. Back for the win. So there we go. The main story dungeon of patch 4.4 is done. But of course, because of what happened, we got separated from everyone else. And by everyone else, I mean the Scions, Hien, Yugiri. So yeah, we gotta catch back up with them and hope we didn't get completely separated from those guys. So, sometime later. Ah, there you are. Hey guys. Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, I had begun to despair of finding you again. No need to worry there, Lord Hien, we got it. Do you recognize the crashed ship over yonder? Mistress Alizé and I briefly inspected it. It is the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. Yeah, and it's already covered in sand. Sir, sure didn't take long. But there was no sign of him. Nor of Maxima and his people. Oh, good job there, Elsanth. Well done. I didn't get it, though. That's okay, though. I'm sure to get it another time. Yeah, and that's not the only thing that's here. Yeah, as we look around the area, something catches our attention. Whatever could it be? More machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. Very well. Probably do so quickly before the sun sets. So Ishtola and I have a spot to look at. So does Alice say she's looking at corpses and so is Lord Hien. And so is Lady Yugiri. Yeah, all covered in sand already? That's, that didn't take long. These were no ordinary soldiers. 
No, oh, no, they here. weren't. Yeah, a lot of corpses around here. So where are the vultures to pick on them? The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. Yeah. Rebellion. Are you saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner? We don't know that yet, or Alphano is fine, I'm sure of it. Like, let's try and give her some reassurance. By the way, I'd love that backdrop Aye, shot. We must not Cringe. jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphano is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? Yeah, come on, Alice. This is your brother. He's been through it all. I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphano is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. Yeah, so we don't get the opportunity to pursue this any further. All we can do is just look at this crash site and the battle scene, and head back out to familiar territory. But yeah, I think Alice still wants to look around. Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. She's got all the reason in the world to be concerned about her twin brother. And so we've arrived back at the Domain Enclave. Hey there, Hien. Let's go ahead and speak with you to finish the challenge. Well, that was a decidedly uneventful journey. I almost found myself hoping for a sandstorm. Well, you certainly got it. Joking aside, I'd say our birds are due a good brush down and a treat or two, wouldn't you? I would think so too. So for our reward, we get 4,265 gil, and the main story dungeon's quest is complete. Stand strong and unified! <laughs>